attention, 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 attention. In 2009, Domino's found themselves in the middle of a PR nightmare. Most people really didn't like their pizza. To me, Domino's tastes uh, low quality and, and forgettable. They started over and completely remade their recipe. But after dishing out a mediocre product for so long, how could they convince anyone that this new pizza was truly new and improved? The solution? The pizza turnaround campaign. Instead of hiding the hate, Domino's embraced it and owned up to the criticism in a big way. Domino's pizza crust to me is like cardboard. Is the entire Nancy story Grace? unfolded <laughs> online in a five minute documentary <laughs> accompanied by a completely uncensored Twitter feed in an ultimate show of transparency. Next, Domino's head chefs hit the road and brought their new recipe straight to the doorsteps of their harshest critics. Carlos! Hey listen, did you say Domino's crust is a little too rubbery? Uh, Domino's crust is a little <laughs> too rubbery. I did. We have a brand new pizza. You wanna try it? Sure, I'll give it a shot. This is great. It was an unorthodox approach to say the least. By actually embracing the criticism and putting their harshest critics on the air, Domino's revamped their image, regained their credibility, and got America pulling for them again. Ultimately driving a 14% sales increase, the largest in fast food history. So okay, so that's so that's fascinating. So so, how, well done. Yes. <laughs> um, so how do you convince a company to go out there and say your product sucks, um, and we know it. Our our product sucks, and we know it. Well, I think that first we had to believe it. You know, and the story that I always tell was that when they were uh, doing focus groups on their pizza. Um, and Domino's employees were there watching the focus groups. People were saying such awful things about the pizza that they actually, that Domino's employees actually started to cry. And that was like, that was an amazing thing because I started thinking of, you know, large food companies and the people that work at them, you know, do they really take a personal responsibility for the products, you know? And how is this affecting them if they, if they, if they see that people feel this way about their food? So that was really the piece that, you know, and knowing the company and who they are and how passionate they are and what they stand for, that this was something that would make sense for them. It wasn't going to be fake. It wasn't going to be a pose. It was who they really were. And that, you know, if we could let that out, it'd be very powerful. You know? so, so just to be clear, they had already planned on a turnaround, right? Or did they, was that something that, I mean, they planned on changing their recipe and, and going back to there scratch? Had, yes, there had been talk for... A little bit of that. So, so you wanted your, the that what what CPV brought was this idea of let's make that all transparent. Let's just let the yeah be. because you know if the notion is people don't like the pizza, why would they believe in the sort of conventional new and improved, new and improved? It's yeah. better. You know why should anyone believe that? And it really required some vulnerability on the part of the brand and some honesty to put that out there for people to say, okay, they've put themselves out there. I'm going to give this a shot. Uh, and try it, and we knew that the pizza was better, uh, so it was. It took a lot of you know confidence, and it was. And in some ways, it was a risk, but f from where we sat, it seemed worth it, and seemed like we'd mitigated it. Right. We could.